Hi, welcome to the L Rush Show, where I deliver content intended to inspire, educate, and motivate. Engage with me online at lrush.com and on social media. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, just a quick one minute announcement to let you know about my virtual courses and free masterclasses. I have courses and free masterclasses based on both of my books. I have the Ultimate Thyroid Course. This is your answer to solving any thyroid issue, whether it be Hashimoto's, radioactive iodine, thyroidectomy after thyroid cancer, or just general hypothyroidism. Reverse T3 issues as well. It's an incredible value at 17 modules and 29 hours of content with amazing guest expert tutorials. I also offer the Ultimate Confidence Course. That is 15 modules and 14 hours with also a few guest expert tutorials. An incredible value. And I have free masterclasses on both of those topics as well. Visit lrust.com to learn more. Hi, Lisa. Great to speak with you again. It's been a minute. Hi, L. You too. Very excited to be here. Look, everybody wants more money. Everyone wants more money. Everyone <laughs> wants more money. And that is what I you know. help people do. So yes. listen, a lot of people who are out there right now listening, it's a struggle between the practicality of intention moving towards money. You know, they think I've got to do this business thing. I've got to do these Facebook ads. I've got to yeah. do this. I've got to. And then there's the vibrational and then there's a little bit of a combo of both. So I guess I'd start off and say, you might as well just tell people your money story. Yeah. So uh, three and a half years ago, I was drowning in $55,000 worth of debt. Four years ago, coming out of a 23-year marriage, very tumultuous marriage and divorce, left with the debt. Yeah. So full financial responsibility for my four college-age kids at the time. So multiple rent payments, multiple tuitions, car payments, insurance, cell phones, gas, groceries, all of the things for five adult human beings. And so um, I just decided that I was not going to continue doing money the same way. I, I just had seen it throughout my family and, and people close to me, and it just didn't seem like it was working in the way that I wanted it. So I wanted to create wealth. I was not just satisfied. That's just me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but for me, that wasn't what I wanted. And so I just learned that there's got to be a better way than chasing money. There's got to be a way to draw it into your life energetically. And so spending my career, 15 years, 20 years in direct support to multimillionaires and multibillionaires taught me that there is a different way um, that they were doing it. I just should have paid closer attention uh, while, I was in, while I was there. What but were the it, things you noticed that when you say they were doing things different, what was that that you noticed? So, well, because I had front, a front row seat to their lives, their personal lives, um, I one thing was that they were all practicing a daily routine that was attracting abundance and wealth and whatever it is that they desired into their lives. And they were living a luxury lifestyle and all of them across the board were practicing a daily manifesting routine. And it looked pretty much the same. Um, it consisted of me uh, meditation, affirmations, setting goals, writing goals, journaling, exercising, et cetera. And so when I went, hit this rock bottom, I said, well, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to try this. You know, I'm going to stop focusing on the money aspect and really focus on my energy and my mindset. And I did, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. And isn't that funny how that works? But it does. We are subconsciously driven people in a lot of ways. And we're sending a lot of ill messages to our yeah. subconscious about money. That's exactly right. And a lot of the programming, you know, happens so young, so early yes. on. So we don't even know, you know, we don't realize that it is running in the background of our minds. And it is, it is responsible for 95% of our outcomes, really. And so if you can fix that, reprogram it and change it to what you want it to be, then the rest is pretty much history. It has to work. I just, <laughs> you know wanted, I mean? yeah, work. I just, I also want to just give a quick shout out to single parents. What, oh. Like when you talked about oh. all of the kids and go, I, I, you know, thinking about my mom struggling, mm -hmm. sacrificing everything to help us. And oh. it just brings tears to my eyes. I think that's why I have such an affinity for single moms and moms who are left in the dust and then have to go pick Thank themselves you. up. 
So I just, I love you for that. And I'm sure you're, you're the, the saint and the guiding light in your children's lives as a result oh. of your efforts. So I just want to give a shout out to anyone out there who's in that. Now, the other thing too, though, is uh, let's talk about this sort of pattern and addic- addiction to struggle when it comes to money, right? There's oh. that story. Where, so let's talk a little bit about that and how that can manifest and how you've seen it come from people and their attitudes about money. For sure. I mean, you know, no fault of their own. I say this all the time. I always say it's not your fault because it happens when you're so young and then you just you just affirm these things and you live them out, you know, Um, but it comes I mean, it just comes in the form of your words and your thought patterns and and how you interact with money and, you know, how you feel about money. And that, you know, that's really it. If, if you can change those things and shift those, um, those feelings and emotions, because money is energy. So if you can get an alignment with the energy of money, then it'll find you. Now, I, I say this, and then there's a caveat to this, because people are going, so should I just sit around and wait for it to come? Well, no, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, but you, your intention and, and your actions will, will, draw that money to you. Right. And so you can go to work every day and work, you know, 60 hours a week and not manifest necessarily anything exceptional financially. Uh, or you can work 20 hours a week, to do your daily routines, reprogram your subconscious mind and money just keeps pouring in. Right. Yeah, so the it's- opportunities show up for exactly. money. Yeah, exactly. But again, you're not, you know, we're not sitting around just looking for it and waiting for it because we have to believe we already have it. And so when you believe you already have it, you're not going to be looking for it, right? I'm not looking for my children because I have them. So it has to, it has to embody, you have to embody it in that way. Like I know it's going to come. So every step that I take, every action move that I take is in support of that goal. And then, then the universe, God, whatever, whatever it is that you believe, the powers that be draws that closer to you with each step that you take. You know, when I tell a little story, I... Uh, a friend of mine years and years ago was dating a guy sort of in a, I guess you would say a blue collar unionized profession, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I have not worked a regular job job in many, many years, like 20 mm-hmm. years. And uh-huh. I remember one time, I mean, you know, what people consider, right? Like a regular right. nine to five. Right. Right. And so we were at the beach one day and he turned to me and it's, this is so oh, this is great. He turned to me and he goes, geez, Elle, are you ever going to work? <laughs> Okay. Like, yeah. Real judgy. And my, you know what? Thanks for my improvisational background. I immediately said, the fact that you asked me that means you always will. Oh, oh yes. Yes. That's some good shit or what? And, and that's so true because it's the people that walk by the Harbor and see the $300, $300 million yacht and they go must be nice. Well, you're never getting that fucking out if that's your attitude. Yeah. Right. So these little things are ingrained in us. Now here's, what's interesting about that guy. It's like, he almost resents and is probably jealous of people who don't have to do what he does. And so he was trying to, you know, it was this little antagonizing comment. Yes. There, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that is just, again, something within his subconscious, right. With his Absolutely. story about about how or or how it's honorable to work a 90 hour week and anyone else must be a charlatan or whatever yes. the thing is. So I think yes. I just wanted to bring that up and hear if maybe there's some bouncing off examples or things you yeah, yeah, yeah. About. yeah. It's funny that you would say that because um I, you know, I have I'm going viral on TikTok and on Instagram. It's just kind of crazy. And the comments that I that I get, the di- the direct messages that I get from people saying, help me, please, help me, please. Like, you know, I'm this, I'm in this situation. And I think, man, energy of desperation just just will never, it will never cross over into abundance. It just never. won't right? The universe is just a mirror, right? So, so all of that, you know, when, when people are coming to me saying, you know, I can't afford this and it's too expensive or, or how could it be possible that you're making investments and getting 40% return in this economy, you know? And, and I, my response yeah. is, well, <laughs> if you don't believe it's possible, it won't be. It right. Won't and also be. how about the other, all the other people making a killing in this economy. So it's not true for everybody. And exactly. that's what, that's what I love about Peggy McCall. Like she'll, she'll, in the way that she talks, she'll say something like, you know, remember there was that recession and back and whatever she goes, yeah, I chose not to participate in that. (laughs) I love it. I'm not going to be a part of that. Okay. You can, but I'm not. Well, you know, desperation, (laughs) this is really great. I want to highlight that. That is 
it's resistance and lack of faith that even, even when it's not about money. So for example, when I tell a story, when I published my first book, a couple of people were like, Oh my God, are you like on Amazon every day? Like checking reviews. And I'm like, no, no, no that is, that is resistance. That's me hoping for people to like me. Oh, do people like me? Do people fuck like, no, no, I'm, I'm good with it. I put it out there. I'm, I'm, I'm confident about it. I don't need to keep checking numbers and when you're doing that, right. That's resistance. And that desperation almost is the same thing. It is. And it repels. It actually does the opposite of what you really want it to do. It, it repels, right? So it pushes things away from you that you really, really want. You know, the bottom line, like you said, faith and belief. If you believed you already have it, would you be looking for it? No. So, so that's what it boils down to is absolute faith, absolute belief that what you want, you already have. And what's interesting to me is I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person, but like it's in pretty much all the scriptures that you have to believe a thing before you see it. Absolutely. So, you know, if you're out there and you consider yourself a person of faith, you're not using it to your advantage and maybe not getting that message that you need to get from the scriptures of whatever religion you're involved with. Absolutely. And, and people talk the talk, you know, they talk the good, the good talk, but they're, but they're not living it. You know, they're not actually living it. And it's so ingrained in us. I was born and raised in the church. So that fiery Pentecostal Hispanic. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, she she ingrained a lot of the, the scripture in me. And so I know it well. Trust me, I know it well. Uh, but most of the time we're, we're, we're saying it, we're, it, we're speaking it out of our mouths, you know, at, by faith, quote unquote, but we're not feeling it. So right. there's a disconnect, you know, between what you say and what you feel. I actually did a TikTok post that I'm going to post later today, but it's it's your words. Your words are contradiction, contradicting what you actually want to happen, right? So you want to create wealth, but you're saying, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. You know, it, it it's opposing it's opposing energies and it just doesn't work that way. Well, words have a lot of power and, you know, I've heard uh, people, you know, coaches in this arena talk about like, instead of a response of like, I can't afford it, or like, I'm just not interested in that investing in that right now, you know, versus like just changing a little, flipping the script a little bit on those kind of things. Are there little tips and tricks to catch our language when it comes to little things like that? Yeah. So I say, I will do it when I manifest it. I will buy it when I manifest it. Nice. Take that trip when I manifest it. And I taught myself that a long time ago. And I stopped using those sentences, those words. I can't afford it. It's too expensive. I'm going to wait till it goes on sale. I want no, 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 no. I never, ever say that because I, because if I'm saying that, that means that I don't believe that I already have it. Right. There are, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting people feel, okay. So how would you instruct some son who's like, well, how do I get into the vibes of actually having faith when I can't even see anything? I'm working this nine to five job, taking care of kids. How do I generate this belief? It is almost like pretend in a way it feels a little, it, it's almost like this. It's like uh, if people, you know, when I, when I, on my thyroid journey and that coaching that I do, uh, people might look in the mirror and they're hating their body every day because of all the things that are going wrong and they're blaming it. And I try to switch it to, instead of looking in the mirror and saying like, I am have my perfect body. It's like, I'm in the process of achieving balance and perfect health. Like you can always add a little something there. Like I'm in the process of, I'm, you know, cause if it feels like a lie to you, right. But this is on the tip of affirmations. We have to sort of cater them sometimes to what we can believe. Anyway, I'd love to hear more about how we can think about affirmations or ways to change our language to get more into the faith of believing something that we cannot see and that we're not necessarily, you know, working like 90 hours, like action. Yeah. Uh, So one of the things that I always say is that if you don't do the reprogramming of the subconscious, then you can say all the affirmations you want right? Because the limiting beliefs and the, and the money mindset blocks are in the subconscious. So I would do the work of reprogramming that through guided meditations, through falling asleep to meditations, to, uh, to abundance and wealth meditations, and then the work is done as you're sleeping. But in addition to that, then of course, is the affirmations definitely use, I speak affirmations every single day. That is my routine. So it is, it's meditation, money manifesting meditation. I just 
use one on YouTube. And then I go right into my spoken affirmations. And then I go into scripting, AKA journaling and writing my goals that I want to achieve in the present tense as if they've already happened. Yes, this and is very important. Works. Let's highlight that. Um, so if I'm writing out a list of goals, it should always be in the like, I am so happy and grateful now that or something. Can you give us yeah. some tips on how to, sure. since people are always writing like, I want this. And you're like, that's not in the affirmative. No, 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 no. So let's start with the simple ones. I am wealthy. I'm a money magnet. Money flows easily and effortlessly to me. I easily and effortlessly create wealth. Okay, those are easy ones. And then you can get more specific into things that you want to manifest personally. So for example, one of the things I've written for two and a half years is I'm the CEO of a multi-million dollar business that is evergreen and makes money in my sleep. Well, guess what's happened? <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. I am okay, very I love I love that one. I yes, love that I, one because my mine is I get paid millions of dollars being myself while I'm sleeping. Yes. <laughs> See, exactly, exactly. Same. So then you customize them to the things that you want specifically, you know, so I, I do this constantly all the time. And, and, and the manifestations show up faster and faster, the more that you, you master doing this. Uh, but it's very, very important writing those goals. 98% of what I have scripted has manifested in the last three years. So it's one of my key tools and practices that I teach my students, my clients um, to use because it's very, not in itself, right? So you have to do the reprogramming, do the meditation. Uh, who says this? I think it's uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. If you're not meditating, you're not creating, right? So mm -hmm. you have to be creating a future, you know, creating a vision of your future so that the memories of the past continue to flood out of your subconscious mind. I uh, was, I had a friend in town and they had their like college age kids. And I was driving around my neighborhood. We we're going to a hike and the 19 year old girl said to me, I live in a very wealthy neighborhood. All the houses are a minimum of like $3 million. And, and she's looking around and she says, isn't it kind of like embarrassing to live around all this, this like wealth, by the way, she lives in like a million dollar house in Chicago. Okay. So, and I said, what's, I go, hold on, hold on. I go, what's em like what's embarrassing about yeah. this? Is there more virtue in someone who owns a shack? What if they're like a horrible person, but the people in these houses are doing wonderful things for people? Like what does, and I don't understand millennials at this point, a lot of them have this kind of view and maybe it's because they don't believe that they'll ever reach it. And maybe it's because, you know, they learn that big companies can be evil and whatever. I get that. But then, and I asked her, I go, wouldn't you want a lot of money yourself? Don't you want to be a multimillionaire? She's like, well, I guess I go, uh, if you want to change the world, having money really freaking helps. Absolutely. You might need to reconsider your position on this. So what, an, and it's not programmed from her parents. They don't have this viewpoint. So it's, it's something's going on. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's funny. My, my daughter's 28 years old and she's very, like a clone of me. She's very ambitious and, you know, she, she does everything that she wants to do. And she's like, I just don't understand these millennials. Money does not motivate them. Like what happened to them? And I said, it's so interesting because it really does it. And, and they just have such a different a different perspective, uh, which which in essence seems to cause them to not strive, right? For like those higher things because of whatever uh, thought process. But, I also, you know, I yeah. think it's, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I just think that it, yeah, it can be programming from young, but then it can also be what you consume. You know, it, it we, there's just so much access now to information. So the thought process can be shifted at any point of your life. I think one of the most important things in manifesting money and becoming financially successful is stop judging what other people are doing with their money. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Like wealthy people are greedy or evil. <laughs> right. Or, or just even judging how someone's spending their money. Like, well, that's really is. Why would they, that's none of your fucking business. No, they do whatever no. they want with their money. Right. They, they would think what you're doing with your money is stupid too. It's so ridiculous. Just, yeah. So, so, uh, you know, we have that, that pops up, you know, Again, like someone may see someone on Instagram with like a Louis Vuitton person go, oh God, like, why would you spend your money on that? Or whatever the thing is. And it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like you need to, when you need to catch yourself, when you're starting to judge how other people yeah. are spending their money. Right. Well, to, you know, that to me, that's just a limiting belief on their part as well. You yeah. know, it's just when you don't, when you don't have it, you're looking in judgment of, of other people of how they're using it you know, like, but it's or just, even if you have it and you think you're more virtuous because you're spending it in another way and you're another judging way. how they do. Agreed. 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 Yeah. 
it, it's just all, it's all, it all boils down to those limiting beliefs internally. Let's talk about, or mention a few money mindset blocks. Maybe we haven't discussed or. Ooh, scarcity, mm. uh, feeling of I'm going to lose everything. So it's one thing to feel like I don't have enough, right? I don't make enough money, but that's always the side of it that, that people talk about because, you know, people living paycheck to paycheck feel financially stuck but there, the other side of it is you have money now and like what if I lose it all you know what 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 if I don't manage this well like like that those are also limiting beliefs you know so I think they pop up on the journey along the way you know I I don't think that you just like rid of them forever because life happens you know and I think that you get better at managing them and and getting them out of your life and your mind but I think that you do encounter them along the way, yeah. you know, along the journey and they change, they change with your level of growth and success. You know how, when you go through the process of learning about the subconscious mind and intention, there's almost like different levels and steps you get to over time. It's almost like it, cause it is a practice. You like learn more from it. You in, increase the faith. What were some of those different little benchmarks for you if you remember any of like oh well I really thought I had it here but then I moved to a new level of thinking oh gosh it, it <laughs> there are many but okay let's just say from being drowning in debt to clearing my debt in two years 55,000 as a single mom no financial support um uh, that that was you know can I can I do that like how am I going to do this is it possible you know how, how would I ever make enough money to be able to take care of take care of all these people and pay off this debt and then I did it and realized wow okay now I now I see how it's possible and how manifestation works and how I can draw money into my life pretty easily and then you start getting more successful with growth and in business and start, start making a lot more money and then the limiting belief pops up as like do I deserve this mm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, am, am I, am I really an imposter? Is this like, how could this be possible for somebody like me? Because there's still this humility of like, I'm, you know, I, I'm a, I've been a single mom twice, you know, so I feel very humble. I still feel super humble to be where I'm at, but though those limiting beliefs pop up and now in this stage, right where I am right now, multiple six figures scaling to a million dollars and then lots of other investments doing well and all kinds of things. Everything that I've journaled mostly um, is happening. And then, so then another limiting belief pops up. Like, can I, can I handle all this wealth? Like, can I, can I handle this? Right. And that's just the truth. You know, like I I would never sit here and pretend that those thoughts don't come in. They do come in. They absolutely do. And I think my goodness, sitting as a CEO of, of multiple companies and, you know, can, can I do this? you know, can I do this? But I know that I can. And so I work through those limiting beliefs and then I affirm them and, and turn them around to be positive. And then we keep it moving and there will be more. That's right. (laughs) It doesn't doesn't just go away. (laughs) There will be more, honey. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, much is required, right? So that's, that's just how it works. So if you didn't feel this way, if we didn't feel this way, if I didn't feel this way, I would be more concerned because it's keeping, it, it's keeping me accountable. It's keeping me in check and it's making sure that I stay grounded and doing the, the things, the practice got me here and that will sustain me for the long haul. It really is staying power and consistency when it comes to this stuff. You can't do oh, I'm gonna do a meditation on a weekend and then you go back to talking crap about how people are spending their money or you know or scarcity mindset right exactly. it's a continual like daily continual. education that's why I love that you mentioned the daily practice of these billionaires because you know some of the stories out of there are like there was this Japanese billionaire who wrote his goals down for like an hour every day every morning yes first thing he did yes. and there is such an imprinting especially when you write them down um, yes, you know, I mean, yes. you, could, you could do it by putting it out there, but it's, there's something about hand to paper or typing that really just sort of seals it in. But what we talked about earlier was, or, or, or we touched on it, which is like, you can write all this stuff down. Uh, that's not going to really get it. You gotta, it's like a gratitude list. You can sit there and write, I'm so grateful for my eyes. I'm so grateful for my legs, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. yeah. But did you go back over the list and actually sit there and feel the feelings of what it is like to be grateful for your eyes? 
yeah. because it'll bring tears to your eyes when you start thinking about blind people. Absolutely. And that's oh. the gratitude, right? That is that feeling. The so feeling. this is a feeling universe, not a logical one. It's Correct. nice to make a list. Let's talk about like, just I want you to expand on that because it's a very important key tenant here. It is. And so that's why I say, you know, just writing alone isn't enough. When you start doing the work of reprogramming the subconscious mind, and then you start meditating and visualizing yourself in a future state of being that you desire, be it wealth, career, love, whatever it is that you want. When you do that every single day and you close your eyes for five, 10 minutes and you see that future version of yourself, that's great, but that's not enough. The, the key is elevating your emotions to feel like you are that person. So yes, during my meditations, I am crying. I am laughing. I am like, I am so in there. Like I am there, you know, and I feel that and I allow myself to go there so much gratitude. Um, just saying, thank you. Like, thank you for letting me experience this, you know? And so the feeling is very important. Same thing with affirmations. You can sit there and go, I am wealthy. I am a millionaire and feel nothing. Then it, then it, there's, it doesn't connect, right? The energy doesn't connect. You have to feel it. You have to feel it when you're writing it, you have to get excited. you got to elevate your emotions. And that is where the magic happens. Well, it's also, yeah, I, I love, uh, there's a couple of stories out there, but I, I see this in my life of manifesting too, which is, when you are in the moments of the intention and the feelingizations and the feeling like it's already there, right? You're mm -hmm. feeling, you're already feeling that that's why you're crying during your medication. You're so grateful for the thing you have received that hasn't come yet, but you know, you are in the present of the end result of it. Um, then when the yes. thing comes, the emotion is almost a little less. And some people are always like, I wasn't, I didn't feel it's like, cause you already you already, yes. you already, yeah, you're, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh my God. Gosh, that's and then such you're trying a to feel point. guilty. You're like, I don't feel like I'm as great because you had already though already got there. <laughs> yes. I love that. L. That's such a great point. Yes. Because that, that is truly how I feel now. <laughs> like it's all happening. And yes, I am so grateful and excited. Yeah. And you know, we, I'll go celebrate a dinner on the weekend, you know, all those sure. things, but, but I've already, I've already been there. So it, right. it's not, it's not the, the feeling when it comes is like, oh my gosh, like it finally arrived. You know what I mean? Like it's here, but it's not like the feeling when I'm actually visualizing it and experiencing it in my mind, uh, because that is a very intense emotion. And so I've already been there. We've already right. lived it. Yeah. I love that. It's just a weird conundrum, like thing that comes up and people have talked about noticing that and feeling a little bit like, wait, why am I not? feeling that same it's like because you're already there yeah so yeah, it's just it's a yeah. very interesting little That's kind of thing one. yes i love that what else can you impart on us for people out there that really want to up their game and bring more income no matter what their situation is or where they're at i mean obviously you did it from where you're at and that's a pretty damn tough situation to be in yeah yeah pretty tough to have um, been in yeah Yes. You know, the key, and I, and I, I cannot emphasize this enough. The key to this is the fundamentals. And I say this all the time, you know, people think that it's, you know, launching new businesses and, and making bigger investments. And those things are great, but those things without staying grounded, balanced and creating something new in your mind they, they, they won't be as gratifying because you have to do the internal work. You have to do the mindset work. And I literally tell my people, just commit to a daily practice. That's it, right? That's all that I did. I just committed to a daily practice, a daily routine. And I stuck with it. And I still do the exact same one three years later, the exact same meditations. That's mm -hmm. just me. I feel like why reinvent the wheel? It's working. So I just stick with the same ones. I, I write my goals and affirmations the same way. Everything is the same. And you know why also? Because my, the millionaires and billionaires that I work for did the exact same thing every single day. It did not change. Didn't matter where they were or it didn't matter. They just did the same thing. And so that's what I, that's what I would say. That's my biggest impartation is just do the same thing and continue to do it. Be consistent and watch, just watch your life shift. Let's talk about timing. People start this process, a couple of weeks go by and they're like, where's my money? It's not working. It's a, you know where I'm going. 
<laughs> I get that. You know, I have to tell you, I a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, someone emailed me and I, she downloaded my free playlist, um, money manifesting playlist. And she's like, I've been meditating for two weeks and I ain't got nothing. <laughs> That's what you're knows. like, well, you're not going, you're not getting there anymore. <laughs> that she, she, and I ain't it. <laughs> And I just thought, well, therein lies the problem, honey. Therein lies the problem. One, you have to be consistent. And two, again, you have to really get to the point of belief and full faith. Yes. If you believed you had it, you wouldn't be saying, I ain't got nothing. (laughs) And also, you wouldn't really care when it showed up. Like, you know what I mean? You'd be like, when it shows up, it's going to be right. You know, I've had that happen to me too, where, you know, you go through and you're like, all right, I'm just going to hold the belief and it's not here yet. And then, you know, you let go of that resistance and it shows up. Um, But again, you can't, it's like, people are like, okay, I'm going to try manifesting. I'm going to envision a cup of coffee, like start small. And then they're like looking around for, you know, you can't go and look for the thing. It's almost a cheat. Then you don't have faith. You're trying to make it happen. So people are trying to force manifestations. Yes. Yeah. Can we touch on that a bit or maybe some thoughts you have about that? Sure. You know, there's just a part of this that's also surrender. Um, you, You really do have to surrender timing and control because you have to also believe that the powers that be will not give you something that you're not ready for, right? And so if you're not getting, there's a big chance that you're just not ready yet. And, um, and you just have to surrender that. Uh, but I, I honestly, when, when you're forcing it, again, the universe is a mirror, right? So it's only going to mirror back to you who and what you already are. I always Day, you have to become the thing you want to become before it comes, right? So you have to become that vibration, that energy. You have to live in that, walk in that, talk in that, that space. And once you do, and you attach the full belief to that, it will show up. It will, uh, but t- you can't I'll, force it. It's, yeah, it's I'll tell a, work. I'll tell a brief one. So, and this usually happens. I'm. It's like. When you're at the point of sometimes when you've tried to man, you know, you're manifesting, you're putting it out there and then it it doesn't come and you're like kind of getting impatient and you're Mm -hmm. like, all right, well, I guess I'll go put action in to try to make this thing happen. And then that's usually sometimes when the actual thing comes in to prove to you. And what it happened with me with dolphins, I love dolphins. I always wanted to like swim or pet a dolphin. I just love them. And so many, many years ago, I was like, I don't know, 2009 or something, many, many years ago. And I'm, you know, putting it out there. I'm imagining what it's like to swim with dolphins. I'm feeling, you know, to, this, this swimming with them in the wild is what I wanted. And uh, it, you know, nothing was showing up. And so I was like, well, I guess I'll go look on the sea world and see if I can go drive down to San Diego and pet a dolphin <laughs> or something, you know, because I just really wanted to be close to a dolphin. Yeah. And at that moment, a friend called me, underwater filmmaker was like, hey, we're going to go to Palau. And they have an outdoor like natural sanctuary where you can swim with dolphins. And can we film you doing it on red 4k camera that just came out at the time. And I had three days of swimming with dolphins and I have this, it's on my Instagram, but I have an amazing video where I just literally had a private, like the other people that came to that center didn't have that kind of situation. It was only because I was with these like national geographic filmmakers that they sort of allowed this. Right. Uh, And it was better than I could have. That's better than I even envisioned the manifestation from the beginning. And that's often the case. It comes in even better than you could have freaking planned. How about we don't limit oh my otherwise unlimited universe? For sure. I mean, like there, there is a scripture that says um, he will do the exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Um, and that's what this reminds me of, because y- y- your mind can only go so far. Yes. Right. But what's going to come back to you is always, I mean, you got to imagine it's the powers, right. Bringing it to you. So it's, and, and by that, the way, everyone, I didn't even have to pay for that trip, by the way, it's expensive to fly to Palau. Okay. I didn't have to pay for anything. So it was also a free trip manifestation. <laughs> it was, you know, and uh, again, better than I could have designed better. it by the way. I didn't even know what Palau was or that it existed. I had no idea this dolphin sanctuary was even there. It's called dolphin Pacific, by the way, if anyone wants to look it up in Palau. Um, 
That's phenomenal. And fell in love with that place, which I would love to go back to. And again, a place I didn't even know existed. So there were yeah. multiple sort of revelations and manifestations within that. But sometimes it, I remember one time I, I manifested a free, this was back when the iPhones first came out, but they had the iPod touch was the first thing Apple came out with at the time. And mm-hmm. then they came out with the iPhone right away. But it was, I looked at the iPhone and I was like, oh, it looks really big and bulky. I, you know, cause we were used to these tiny flip phones or whatever. And I, I was like, no, that seems weird to have a phone that big, but I would love an iPod touch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Long story short, someone just gave me a free iPod touch. I don't know where I'm like crying. I can't believe it. And then uh, I'm telling my friend, and then I actually, it's sometimes this happens. You manifest something, it comes in and you realize I actually don't want it. That happens too. Yes, um, and so I, I realized I didn't want it and I traded it in for an iPhone. So then I call my friend and I tell her this manifest- manifesting story about a free iPhone. And she goes, I want to manifest a free iPhone too. And here's what's crazy. I had just done it. And yet in my mind, I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of not like, like, uh, like I even doubted and was kind of a downer in my head about her ability to do it, even though I had just done it. Okay. So that's another thing. <laughs> then she uh, is like, I'm going to manifest a free iPhone and it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up. And she goes, all right, you know what? It's not coming. I'm really one an iPhone. I'm just going to go down to the Apple store today and buy one for my husband and I. And she leaves her house. It's around Christmas time and she leaves her house. But before she goes to the Apple store, she decides to stop by the next door neighbor's to uh, give them their Christmas presents because she's known them forever. And she walks in and she's like, oh yeah, she's like, hey, I'm just on my way to the Apple store, but I thought I'd stop by, blah, blah. And uh, they're like, what are you going to the Apple store for? A new computer? And she's like, no, I'm going to get us the iPhones. And the woman goes, hold on, hold on, stay right there. She goes upstairs and she brings down a shrink wrap, brand new iPhone and hands it to her and goes, please take this. This was given with points. They're they're like 70 years old. She's like, I don't, I don't even know what to do with it. And my friend is crying going, oh my God, I'll pay you for it. And she's like, no, 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 just take it, just take it. And I was blown away and I'm like, oh my God, here I was. I had manifested it yet. I doubted someone else's ability to do it. And then she did it. She did it. She and it came it. in right at that last minute. It's like, I was about to call Sweet SeaWorld up. Dolphin Drip comes up. She was about to go actually make it happen. And it showed up. And it showed up. I love that. I love that. I'll tell you a similar story that just happened. And I just came back from Austin last week, uh, meeting with one of my private wealth mentorship clients. And <laughs> when I got to the airport, someone came up to me and said, um, hey, do you, want me to, do you want me to just cut you through the, the line? And I was like, Sure, that's fine. And then I just got cut through the line. So I fly to Austin, I go to Austin, get to a hotel, and the lady hands me my keys and she goes, I upgraded you to a suite. And then I when I get back to the to the airport in Austin, some some man randomly walks up to me. He's like, Hey, let me let me pull you up to the cut the line. <laughs> I mean, I haven't I don't know these people. I haven't said anything to anyone. It is so crazy. It's the how, energy that you're it's emanating. The energy. And, and so to your point one it's one thing to in- put intention out about manifesting something specific and I believe that specific and predictable but also it's just carrying the vibration and the energy of abundance right and then people feel that and they want to give you things for free it, it happens all the time and I watched it happen to my wealthy executives all the time yeah because they have Get that abundance mentality that's right and it just it and it so they, they're magnetic it just, it just attaches itself to them. It is wild how it works. I also always like to mention this to people. And I know you'll, you'll totally resonate with this, which is there's so many people that look at wealthy people and they go, it's so not fair. Like they're, they're, they're a horrible person or they're mean, or it's not fair. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's totally fair because they're thinking right about money. That doesn't mean they're healthy. It doesn't mean they have good relationships. It doesn't mean anything else in their life is going well or whatever. Yeah. It, they're thinking right about money. That's, That's right. fair. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, that, that it, you know, we can't make it just like embody everything. It, it, it's right. money. So if right. they are focused on money and well, you know, what I mean? like it can't just be, they got it. They got it right. They figured, they figured it out. And that's, and then we cut out there a little bit. Hi, you cut out a little bit. I can't hear you as right well. Now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you cut out. Can you just repeat the part where you said they figured it out and then I didn't hear anything after that? I said they figured it out and I'm saying, and I feel like I figured it out and I feel like it's very fair, right? Because that's right. I, I, I'll pay with money. So it's fair. 
tell us tell- how we can benefit from you, how to find you, what you have for us so we can all, everyone listening can get on this train if you want more money out there. Uh, aside from looking at your Instagram and TikTok and seeing all the inspiring reels and things that you post, how can we work with you? What do you have for us? Yeah, so I have a free money manifesting and wealth building masterclass. That is where everyone can start and should start. Um, And I give a lot of value and tips um, and secrets in that masterclass. And that masterclass could then lead you to the Millionaire Morning Mamas Academy, which is my education. Uh, platform. And that's where you would go deeper and have some mentorship with me and, and all of those kinds of things. So that link will be here provided. Great. I'll put that in the show notes uh, for everyone. And um, amazing. I can't wait to see what's next <laughs> for you. I know. I'm so excited. And same for you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Always, always a pleasure to chat with you. You as well. Thanks so much. And for everyone else, we'll see you next week. Hey, listeners. You know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt. Totally addictive, and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye. Visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code PALEO10 for 10% off. I also love and regularly use Paleo Valley products. They make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products. I use the superfood greens powder, grass-fed beef sticks, the organ complex, and their bone broth bars. I love the lemon and apple. I also use their essential sea complex and more. Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash L Russ for 15% off. I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo-approved, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily, from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit primalkitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off. 